Mathematics in Canada, presented by BSN2, one, Group 1. What is nursing informatics? Nursing informatics is the science and practice that integrates nursing, its information and knowledge, with the management of information and communication technologies to promote the health of people, families, and communities worldwide. Yet, at this time, we will focus on nursing informatics in Canada. Prior to speaking about nursing informatics in Canada, let us get a quick look at its healthcare structure. Healthcare in Canada is delivered through a publicly funded healthcare system. Competitive prices such as advertising are kept to a minimum, thus minimizing the percentage of revenues that go directly towards care. In general, costs are paid through funding from income taxes. In British Columbia, taxation-based funding is supplemented by a fixed monthly premium, which is waived or reduced for those on low incomes. There are no deductibles on basic health care, and copays are extremely low or non-existent. Although free health care may seem to create a utopian society, it is far from perfect and may create huge amounts of problems for patients in regards to wait time, proper health records, quality of care, and so forth. This is further explained by Dr. Zintner and Dr. Patterson. In Canada, the system that we have, when people say two-tier, I think in the back of their mind, they think they're talking about two-tier for quality. But really what we have in Canada is a single tier for price. It's clear that people who are wealthy, well-connected, articulate, are more likely to get better care at zero cost than people who are less well-connected. Canadian health care may appear to be free at the point of service, but it's certainly not free because Canadians have reasonably high income tax rates, and we know that uh, a large proportion of government spending goes to health care. The result, of course, is that if you spend money on health care, you spend less for roads, less for schools, uh, less for economic development, less for playgrounds for children. Provinces have different abilities to pay for the services that they provide. The result is that the scope of coverage varies from province to province. Every Canadian doesn't have access to the same scope of service and the speed of access varies by pro from province to province. So in some provinces you may have a short wait time for hip and knee surgery, in other provinces a longer one. Economists say that whenever you have price controls you have rationing and poor quality. So the Canadian healthcare system functions through price controls because prices are controlled by government and so you get rationing and poor quality. As a physician, sometimes it's very difficult to see people in discomfort and disabled as a result of illness and unable to access the care that they need. Um, now, many people do get timely, appropriate care. The interesting thing is, for minor illness, we're probably very good at uh, looking after people. The waiting time for coughs, sore throats, sprained ankles is often very short. It's only when people need uh, important services that they sometimes have to wait too long. When my husband went for a routine problem, he was told that on the x-ray they had also noticed that there was a, a lump on his throat. So this lump was already causing his breathing to be deflected. So this was a lump that according to clinical practice guidelines, should have been investigated. In his particular case, his problem accelerated faster than was expected, and he did not receive timely care. The cancer diagnosis was, was not investigated because the surgeon said, the surgery is going to happen anyways, we will determined from the biopsy whether or not there is cancer. What actually did happen was that there was cancer there. 
for the thyroid cancer took hold and he died of the thyroid cancer. Generally with thyroid surgery and thyroid cancers, the surgery is is 100% curable for most thyroid cancers. So in a and if the surgery had been done in a more timely fashion, I believe that my husband would still be alive. My husband sort of felt that the system was going to take care of him. So he didn't advise me actually that he required care until he needed to go into the emergency and when it had gotten to that stage. So I think we, we live under the assumption that when we need the healthcare system, it will be there for us. So that I think the frustration was that when he called upon the system, it wasn't there in a, as timely a fashion as was required for the problem. So I think that causes frustration because you're expecting that you've paid the tax dollars, you've, you've, you've um, been a good citizen, he would not have wanted to go anywhere else to get his health care. I think this was an issue that came up as we, as we got to the later stages. People said, well, had you known that this was going to happen, would you have been more proactive? And I think that, that, that that's a difficult situation to be, to be in because it's almost you've passed the best before date and all of a sudden your options are limited. And uh, I think what we both felt was that had the system informed him that it was going to delay his care, then he might have been more proactive about, uh, about, about taking charge of, of the situation. I think what happens is that um, it may be a a personality trait of, a, of many Canadians <laughs> of um, the good Canadians they wait in line you know so that they they, they know that the, the care is available for them sometimes they have to wait a little longer I think in in my husband's case the, the wait turned out to be too long and, and led to his death so how is nursing informatics used in Canada and what benefits can it offer? As we have learned, healthcare in Canada is not as simple as it sounds. Although the system may work to an extent, there are problems with wait times and information sharing, as well as priority services to those in greater need. Through a better system of organization and real-time patient-to-care provider dialogue, there can be a great improvement in many departments, thus eliminating most or virtually all of the problems not addressed by the past system. Many feel that computer and internet technology can bridge the gaps with minimal effort. For example, it's quite a complex process with multiple different disciplines required to get a patient the necessary treatment they need. A patient would start off in the emergency room and be seen by a triage nurse who assesses the patient for the type of problem they have. At some point, a physician sees you and a nurse as well. On top of that, we, of course, will be drawing blood. We may have an x-ray technician, for example, coming in to do x-rays. Going home, of course, requires interaction potentially with a pharmacist. We've got a lot of people, a lot of providers, wanting to use the same chart. There's always a line. So you can see there's an accessibility problem, of course. We are coming to a point where we need to improve our efficiencies. We have to move in a more integrated fashion. Well, HP and CompuGen actually acted as, as a glue, almost, to, to bring together a group of multiple providers. We went back to the frontline staff. We had physicians, we had nurses, we had pharmacists, all part of a device working group. And really, HP and CompuGen were there trying to provide us with the necessary solutions to meet those demands of each of those providers. So there were two new pieces of technology that Toronto East Journal introduced to our clinicians' workflow. For our nursing staff and our pharmacists, we use MedCarts, designed to try to ensure portability and mobility, really. We wanted to make sure, again, that we could get clinicians to patients' bedsides to deliver the right medication at the right time. For our physicians, we're using wireless devices on wheels or WOWs. 
basically come equipped with a 19-inch HP Compact Ultra Slim Desktop PC. They're durable, they have a long battery life, very strong processing power, a USB badge reader, a fingerprint reader, a wireless patient barcode scanner. I can actually take a portable device with me and go from patient to patient looking at their medical histories, looking at their results, and sometimes I can even show them right in the room. In the past, what we had was a system where a physician would write an order, a porter would take that down to a central location down in the basement, believe it or not, and that pharmacist would take that order, process that, eventually call the porter again and bring the medications upstairs. Now, with electronic orders, orders are entered in directly. We no longer have to have that paper processing time. And in the end, I think what we benefited from was, was actually better communication amongst the group. I was quite surprised to see how we could all come together and, and uh, HP and CompuGen really facilitated that process well. One of the other uh, key beneficiaries of the system, I think, are physicians. For example, I had a patient uh, that had a drug allergy, and the drug allergy was to penicillin. And this patient uh, had a very serious infection that we wanted to use, a drug called Mirapenem. The technology alerted us that Mirapenem is a drug that's very related to penicillin groups. And uh, had I actually offered the patient Mirapenem, they may have actually had an allergic reaction, so it could have been quite serious. We avoided a very serious complication. We now have more time to spend with patients looking at the various medications, looking at drug interactions, looking at potential allergies, and trying to optimize patient care. I think you're going to see a, a far greater partnership between IT and a lot of our clinical staff. I think the potential here is limitless. We're really sitting on a verge where I think the technology we're seeing is much like the stethoscope of uh, the 17th century.